Hello again, my dear subscribers. Thank you for all of the new subscribers who have uh, recently been subscribing to the channel. The content of my video today is going to be about one of those. Uh, I've been making videos this week about all the things that are irritating in math. And there, there's a lot of it in irritating in math education. I should say it's not math, but we're going to talk about a very common misconception that uh, in there it's taught in many schools around not just in the united states but also around the world at least around the western world which is what i'm familiar with i don't know um, how they do it in other places i do know how they do it here in the united states and also in parts of uh, places like great britain canada etc um so math lies now i know the title of the video is a little bit strong right some of you might be saying but professor cromwell uh my teacher wouldn't lie to me my definition of a lie is something that is a statement that is not true a statement or a principle that is not true it can be unintentional but it's still a lie just because someone doesn't have the intention doesn't make it any less of a myth or misconception or in this case a lie because it's not really based on any solid mathematical grounding and one of those is the issue of PEMDAS right and typically they pronounce it in this very PEMDAS right as if this is something some magical thing and the issue that I have with it is that if you if you learned PEMDAS you know that it stands for uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally and it's an acronym and it's really an acronym that has haunted students' uh, math lives for generations. It's supposed to promise you order, but all too often it delivers confusion. I see it every single year in my college freshman courses uh, when they're being introduced to calculus. The first thing, oh, PEMDAS, PEMDAS. Not good. Not good. Why? Because the majority of students read it like a grocery list, right? They, they literally say parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction in that order, right? Well, not exactly. So picture this, right? Let's say you have an expression. This is something I see every single semester without fail. You have six, divided by and then we'll do two times five as you can see now if you learn PEMDAS uh, literally the first things that's the first thing that students do they say oh multiplication first so they, they do two times five which is ten and then they get they go six divided by ten and they give you a decimal, right? They give you 0 0.6. And honestly, as I'm always very honest with all my audience members, that hurts my eyes to watch. It pains me to watch it. It literally gives me, my heart just starts because I know that, not that I'm blaming my, I don't blame my students, of course, it's not their fault. I'm blaming the, uh, an entire education system that relies, like I said in my video, the, uh, my previous video, relies on crutches and so-called tricks. And this is not mathematical. So if a student were to confidently apply PEMDAS here, like a loyal follower, marching it, you know, through it step by step, they would get the wrong answer. They just wandered into a math trap. The correct solution is actually, there is a real order of operation, which we'll, we will talk about. The real order of operation says that whenever you see division or multiplication, you do whichever comes first from, very important, left to right. Left to right. That is the convention. Now, some teachers I know, of course, some teachers clarify that. But if so many students are interpreting to do the multiplication literally first, then that indicates a big problem in our, in our education system. So either two things are happening, either students are just not paying attention, which could be the case. Every year I notice that more and more. Or it could be that teachers are not, not all the teachers are at the secondary school level are clarifying that. 
So in this example, listen to what I just said. You look at the expression from left to right, and multiplication and division ha actually have equal priority. You do whichever comes first. So in this case, we have 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And now we have 3 times 5 left over, and the correct answer would be 15. That is the proper order of operations. And why is that? Because multiplication and division are equally powerful. They're not locked in some hierarchy where multiplication always wins. What do you think this is about? You handle them in the order they appear from left to right. So this whole pen DOS thing in its simplicity, and it often leaves this important detail out in the dust. So how do we fix this mess? Simple, you ditch pen DOS. Now, if you still are the type of person that needs some kind of uh, memorization to or a device, there is a much better option. It's called Gemma, Gemma, G-E-M-A, and stands for grouping grouping symbols if you have them exponents multiplication division from left to right whichever comes first And, of course, addition and subtraction is the last thing you do from left to right, whichever comes first. Now, where did the order of operations come from? It's simply a convention because mathematicians, we had to come up with a way where uh, we don't have ambiguity. We like to have the same answer, like, look what happened above. If we didn't have a convention, then people would, some people would be saying 0.6. Other people would be saying 15, and that's just preposterous. We have to have the same answer for numerical expressions. So that's how we came up with the convention of what orders uh, it, it takes on. So we needed a standard way to get consistent results from the problems. Have to, you know, you've ever, if you've ever argued about splitting a restaurant bill, you know you can't afford chaos in your calculations. So the most powerful operations get done first. Exponents, for example, pump up or shrink, depending on how you look at it, numbers faster than multiplication or division ever could. And multiplication beats addition every time. So when things need special treatment, you slap on some parentheses then. That's the math way of saying that it's begging for your attention. So another example is, uh, let's say you had 4 plus 3 squared. 4 plus 3 squared and we're going to do uh, multiplied by 10 divided by 5 in the parentheses. So if you do that, now my screen froze. Well, there we go. All right. All right. So according to the order of operations, you need to do your exponent first. Three squared, right? That part of PEMDAS, it's okay, right? So parentheses exponents. The parentheses definitely should be taken care of first, usually, but not always. And I'm going to show you another example. But in this particular instance, you do by inspection from left to right, you have a parentheses here. So you have 10 divided by 5, which is 2. That clears that. And then you have 4 plus 3 squared multiplied by 2. Well, you now have 3 squared. You have to take care of the exponent. That's 9. So then that becomes 4 plus 9 times 2. And then from left to right, you still have this multiplication here. So 9 times 2 gives you 18. 18 plus the 4 gives you 22. And that is how you always take care. This will be true anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. No matter where you go in the world. Right? But, again, what if I gave you, though, 
a problem just as follows. What if we had instead one minus three fifths minus one twelfth multiplied by one half? So if you were to follow PEMDAS, you would, most people would say, do the parentheses first. But do I have to? No, I answer the question. Do I have to do the parentheses first here? I could. But what if I wanted to instead multiply one half times every single element in the parentheses? Right? In other words, what if I wanted to distribute one half times this, one half times this? Is there a law, a math law that says I cannot do that first? Of course not. Of course not. Because multiplication distributes. This is the distributive property. We talked a little bit about it in a previous video. So yeah, you could do the parentheses first, but why don't you give me some liberty and let me do the one half times every single element inside the parentheses, right? So PEMDAS wouldn't really, it's not very clear in this problem, is it? So that's why we need to be able to have a deeper understanding Next time you face an order of operations problem, leave PEMDAS and its confusion behind. Understand that there are multiple ways often, not always, but sometimes it depends on the problem. Sometimes you can distribute first. So this will not lead you astray. The real order of operations is that from left to right, yes, parentheses, yes, but multiplication and division, whichever comes first from left to right, addition and subtraction, whichever comes first from left to right. Um, so I just wanted to share that because look at this example again. Look at it very carefully. You can always multiply that one half times. Or you can, yes, you can do what's inside the parentheses first. But sometimes I often want to simplify my denominators. So when you rely on things like PEMDAS, Oftentimes it gets you the wrong answer. I've seen it over and over and over again. Make sure that when you're doing these problems, look at this one, for example. I've seen students do things like this. We have 10 minus 2 plus 3. And they say, oh, the addition always. I had a student yesterday said the same thing. They said, but the addition comes first. Does it? Then she would do 2 plus 3 is 5. And then we have 10 minus 5, which equals 5. And that is not correct. That is not correct. Addition and subtraction have equal priority. You do whichever comes first from left to right. 10 take away 2, that's 8. Then you have 8 plus 3, which gives you 11. All right. There are many more examples of the order of operations, but that but Gemma, if you if you have to insist on something, Gemma is much more reliable than PENDOS and all this silliness. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, this Friday, I, I finally someone is going to be sending me a copy of the uh, module two SAT digital module two. And we'll see. I will just I might do a live session. We'll see. And let's see as if it's as hard as people say. People are always telling me, beware of essay. Well, if it's a, if I'm judging by what I saw on module one, uh, it really is more like I'm cracking up more than it is uh, anything. So.